welcome to Web of Stories. My name is Melinda and I'm here for another Tag Tuesday. Today I am going to do the evolution of a reader tag. This tag was started by Spread Book Joy and I was tagged, um, tagged in it by Jennifer at Jennifer Loves Books. She actually tagged me a couple weeks ago but I was on vacation and uh, I was visiting my dad in Arizona and his Wi-Fi is terrible so I didn't see it until recently but here it is. Uh, the evolution of a reader tag. This is a relatively short tag. It's basically four prompts plus tagging some other people. So let's get started. Prompt one. How has your, uh, it's what you read. How has your taste in books uh, evolved? So I guess this is kind of like, what is my history as a reader? When I started reading, I mean, my earliest memories of reading were my parents reading, well, my mother reading to me, and we would go to the library. Um, my mother would usually pick out books for me when I was really, really little. And then when I started picking books out for myself, um, I was raised to be a child who seeked approval. Um, this is not a therapy session. <laughs> there you go. So um, the kind of books I got sort of met my mother's taste in books. And I say that because my mother didn't like things like science fiction and fantasy or anything in those realms. So those were not things that I read as a child. As I learned to read on my own, I got into things. Um, I remember Ramona um, and the Ramona books were my favorite. I loved Ramona. The Little House on the Prairie books I liked because I liked the TV show. <laughs> so that got me into the Little House on the Prairie books. And I read a lot of books like that when I was a kid. Um, I remember all the books I had, they're probably all Scholastic books. I do remember our Scholastic book fairs. They were awesome. Um, I miss those. I know that there's places now that's like doing Scholastic book fairs for adults, which I think is so cool. Or Scholastic style book fairs for adults. The books aren't from Scholastic because they're for adults. <laughs> um, so then when I got into high school, so I was reading a lot of sort of like um, what everybody else was reading, sort of mainstream, books like that. But when I got into high school, well, actually probably starting a little bit when I got into junior high and then into high school, um, is when for school I started reading things that were more literature. Things like, I remember um, it, sixth, for me, middle school was seventh and eighth grade. So in seventh grade, eighth grade, and ninth grade, we read fl uh, flowers from Algernon each year. So I knew that book really well. Um, I remember middle school, we read um, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. And then when I was in high school, it wasn't really until my junior year that I think we started reading actual novels. We would usually read like abridged versions or um, like selections from, but the actual novels that I remember reading in my junior year were, um, it was American Lit. And there were three novels that we read or were supposed to read. Uh, the Scarlet Letter, which everybody hated except me. I love that book. That's one of my very favorite books is The Scarlet Letter. Um, and then uh, Huckleberry Finn, which if you've been on this channel, you know my history with that short story. I couldn't get past the dialects, so I didn't read it. And then I kind of faked my way through the district exam and scored the highest in the district. Still have not read Huckleberry Finn, although my goal this year, one of my goals this year, is to actually read or listen to <laughs> Huckleberry Finn. So only because I want to cancel out that karmic debt. And then the third novel we read was The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald, which again, everybody hated except me. I loved it. So that's where I started getting into literature a little bit more. Um, but still, mostly it was in school. I enjoyed reading it in school, but I usually didn't read things like that on my own. And then when I went to college, um, I studied history, but I um, took a lot of English classes. We didn't have an English minor at my school, but I took classes that it... They call it a specialization and um, at any other university, it would have been a minor. So I, I read a lot and that's where I read things like the Brontes and Austin and Hardy and all of those, um, which I really enjoyed. I read a lot of English literature there because I was doing English history and then English, British literature to go along with it. Um, once I graduate, graduated from college, um, I graduated at a really hard time to find a job. So um, I had a summer job during college working at the public library in my town. And that kind of morphed into an actual job once I left school for a couple years. So I was working in a library. Um, and that kind of coincided with the birth of Oprah's book club. 
And so all of a sudden there were these books that were just super, super popular. Um, and there would be these huge long holds lists on them. But our library would always reserve a couple copies um, for, I don't know, they called it the greatest hits or something, but it was a shelf of books for books like this that are super popular where they don't allow holds. It's just first come, first serve. And as I worked in the library, I was able to grab those as they came in and check them out to myself because I was the first person. <laughs> and so I started getting into books, you know, the literary fiction sort of thing that, you know, Oprah would choose. So I did that job for a couple of years before I, I moved to Boston. I lived in Boston for three years, and that was pretty much a continuation of my kind of exploring modern literary fiction, but I still stayed pretty much in the, the center of that genre. Like I, I didn't read genre books generally. Um, and then when I moved back to Oregon, that's when I got involved in book clubs. And I love book clubs. If you've been on this channel, you know how much I love book clubs. And they really um, introduced me to a lot of different genres. So at this point, I will read just about anything. There are genres that are not speaking to me at the moment, which is fine. Um, for example, romance is not speaking to me. That's not anything against romance. It's just not what's working for me at the moment. That's fine. Um, there'll probably be a time in the future when it's working for me again. Um, I am not as comfortable with a couple genres. I'm not as comfortable with science fiction. I'm not as comfortable with sort of higher fantasy, but that's fine. I'll still give it a try. So I think that that, you know, that's when my reading taste really opened, um, is when I moved back and I started getting involved in book clubs and learning that reading could be more than just reading. It could be discussing uh, and building a community around books. So that's the long answer. <laughs> uh, question number two is how you read. Has the format of your format of your reading changed much? So I've actually done um, a different tag on this. It's called the e-reader tag. I was very much against e-reading for a very long time. And then when my children were very little, I was gifted a Kindle, um, sort of against my will. <laughs> but um, it has become necessary for me to read more on my Kindle. I have some eye issues that sometimes make reading print very hard. And on my Kindle, well, actually, I usually use a Kobo now. I have a Kindle and a Kobo. Um, but I can change the contrast, change the background light, change the size font, all those different things that just make reading more accessible for me on at times when my eyes just are being difficult. So definitely, I'm like, as far as eye reading, I'm pretty much 50-50 print and ebook at this point. I also do do listen to audiobooks. Um, I know people who listen to like several audiobooks a month. I I don't. Um, part of that's because I also listen to a lot of podcasts, so you have to kind of stay on top of those. And most of my audiobook listening is at the gym. So for example, in March, I didn't finish an audiobook because I, for various reasons, was didn't go to the gym as much. So, you know, that kind of ebbs and flows, but I do read audiobooks as well. Um, I have done other things, like I have used the Serial app in the past. If you don't know that, that's a really um, nifty little app to use if you're interested in reading classics or books in the public domain, I should say, because um, it is important that they're in the public domain. <laughs> um, it's a free app and you they have hundreds of books on there and it's pretty much anything that's over 100 years old rule of thumb and you could choose like david copperfield um and you subscribe to it and then every day it gives you a chunk like a 10 to 20 minute reading chunk of that book to read and just every day you just keep on it and it, you read it as a serial i read a middle march that way um i have read other books that way it, it can be a really handy thing to do. And so I have done that in the past. So that's kind of how I'm reading these days. The third question, um, how much do you read? Is that more or less than previously? Uh, when do you read and how often, and how has how often you read changed? So um, over the last several years, I mean, for the last, well, the last 14 years, <laughs> My life has had different demands on it because I've had kids. And so now my kids are, they're 12 and 14. And so they're more self-sufficient usually. I do also have a husband who is sometimes self-sufficient as well. <laughs> but, um, you know, in the last couple of years, I've kind of gotten to a good point of how much I can read. And so 
you know, my goal, my Goodreads goal every year is 144 books because that's just sort of a good level for me. And I set that goal to kind of keep me on track. And uh, that works well for me. Sometimes I always, I, I don't think I've ever not met it, but sometimes I have exceeded it. And sometimes I have just met it, but it's a good amount for me. Um, as for when I read, um, I do make a point of having set time to read. So the main thing is usually like during the week after I eat lunch, I'll read for an hour. Um, usually there's like an hour between the time when I eat and when my son comes home from school. So I usually use that time for that. Um, I read before I go to sleep at night. Um, how much I read depends on how good I am at going to bed at a decent hour, which is not always, that doesn't always happen. Um, and sometimes I'll read like in the morning when I'm getting ready um, and I do audiobooks at the gym. So I will find different pockets of time to read throughout the day, but I do have sort of my set reading time after lunch and at bed. Um, and it's been working well for me. Um, it does have to be kind of scheduled. The one thing I, I do wish is that um, my husband is, is not really a reader. And so he doesn't understand that when I am reading a book, that means I'm reading a book. It doesn't mean I'm not doing anything and therefore available to chat. <laughs> so we're still working on that, but you know, it's fine. <laughs> so that's about when, how much I read. Um, as I said, I'm reading more now than I have in the past, but that's mostly because my kids are getting out at age now where I don't have to constantly have my eyes on them. So we'll see how that goes. And, uh, oh, final question. How has booktube changed you as a reader? Mostly it has, um, it's changed in two ways. One is I have a lot more sources for recommendations now. I follow a lot of other creators who we have, our interests are Venn diagrams. So there's that part that overlaps and then there's that other part and it's through that other part where I get recommendations that I may not have heard of before. So that's always really exciting. And sometimes they work for me and sometimes they don't and that's fine because not every book is for every reader. Um, and the other way it's changed me is it has helped me to think about books in a different way. Uh, we're thinking about tag, you know, tags are a great example where um, you'll have questions and you'll have to actually think about books you've read and bring them and, and think about them and maybe not ways that you have done so before. And I really enjoy that. Um, and I enjoy watching other people do it too, because that's when I get my recommendations. So those are probably the two ways in which booktube has changed me. And so the final prompt is to tag some people and um, I am going to tag three newish, uh, newish booktube channels. Um, the first one is Priscilla at Evening Reads. Um, I've been following her for a little bit. She's a lot of fun. Um, she and I have pretty similar tastes. She is an American, but she lives in Amsterdam, so that's fun. Um, and I do, I, I, I have gotten recommendations from her. And then the next two, I actually just recently found out, and they are new channels. Um, and there's Randy at The Literate Texan, who has a great sense of humor, and he's really entertaining to watch, and he's very unexpected. So I love that. He's a big Shakespeare reader, and he's an English literature guy, and um, but he also reads like Star Trek novels. <laughs> So, so there's a, there's a great uh, variety there. And then there's Stevie at Stevie Reads, um, who I also have just discovered. So I'm going to tag her as well. Um, she uh, reads a lot of, she reads a little bit more fantasy than I do, but that's fine because then I get some fantasy recommendations that I haven't had before. She also reads a lot of manga and I am not a manga reader. My brain does not work that way very well, um, but my daughter is. So um, there was a very bad situation once when I tried to find her some manga. It just, it was bad. It was a bad situation. <laughs> so I am not allowed to like choose manga for her, but Stevie has lots of recommendations. So I'm hoping to get some recommendations from her that for manga that my daughter might like, and that is appropriate. It's that last part where I messed up on. Um, anyway, so I will I will include those three channels below. And um, also, if you've not done this tag, I made sure to use newer uh, creators for this tag because I know it's been around for a while. So a lot of people have already done it. Um, but if you haven't done it, I would consider yourself tagged as well. So thank you for listening to me and I will see you in the next video. If you enjoyed this, give me a thumbs up give me a subscribe, leave me a comment, and uh, I'll see you later. Thank you.